So hello everyone and welcome to a new edition of You Are My Borough with myself, Scott Wilson and Dom Shaw from the Northern Echo. Are you well, Dom? I'm sat, well, I've just thawed out. I was at um, Southern Borough under 21s last night, which we'll talk yes. about. And like, end of April, you kind of think, well, I say end of April, middle of April, you kind of think you're through the worst of it, don't mm. you? So I almost didn't take my big coat and I thought last last. Oh, that that would have been a schoolboy era. Yeah, drop my, hat, drop my hat on the drop my hat unbeknown at the time. Drop my hat on the pavement outside, so I didn't have that. It was cold at the stadium of light yeah. last night. Yeah, it's so, um, but I've warmed well, up. We'll have a touch on that though. We'll have a touch on the um, the under 21s. We'll obviously talk about the last couple um, of games, the draws against Hull um, and Ipswich. We'll have a quick look ahead to Leeds and kind of what's left for Borough this season. A little bit of housekeeping before we start. If you're um, if you're watching us on YouTube, seeing our glamorous faces, then um, like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. If you're listening on the podcast, hearing our not so glamorous voices, then, um, <laughs> rate, rate and review and, and let us know what you think. It does help. We do take the feedback on board. Um, it's great to know what you're thinking, what you want to talk about, what the uh, the general mood on Planet Borough is. Um, I get, what is the general mood on Planet Borough, Dom? I mean, I think it's a funny one, isn't it? Because in isolation, two away draws against Hull and Ipswich are two pretty good results. And, and Borough, to be fair to them, have played very well in both games and are obviously on you know, a pretty lengthy unbeaten run now. Um, but with eight points to Norwich, we're nine to play for. I think we've pretty much accepted that the playoffs are long disappeared over the horizon. So so where kind of are we in the in the general Borough moodscape with three games to go? I, th I think it's positive because the, the, there is an acceptance now that it's gone. But I think that was always the case, really. It, it always felt... It always felt unlikely, didn't it? It always felt. You've like never been in and dropped out, have you? No, they? no, and and for that reason, you know, if you get so Ipswich a draw at home to a Borough team that are unbeaten in eight in isolation is by no means a disaster, but in the position Ipswich are in, like that's the type of result that can spark yeah. worries and nerves and anxiety, like we're seeing at the top. Whereas I think with Borough, because it always felt like a long shot anyway, all it's doing in the last two results. Are doing all others frustration. I think you know Borough could have kicked on and won at Hull. I thought they were they were poor Borough in the first half after getting themselves in front. Wasn't it Ipswich on Saturday? But again, I think that's clearly a, a very good point. But I think now to be nine games unbeaten, and we were talking a couple of months back, weren't we? If, if, if Borough aren't going to make the top six, you need to see the shoots for next season. You need to see that something to build on. And there's definitely that, isn't there? There's definitely that, even though the, the top six is clearly going to be out the reach. I think so. Yeah, I think um, I think what you're seeing is some players who haven't been in form all season suddenly hitting form. Latter lat, a key example, Isaiah Jones, obviously back to pretty much somewhere near his best. Lewis O'Brien has definitely looked a completely different player in the last three weeks, month um, than he had. With O'Brien as well, you're seeing two or three players who have been injured and are now coming back into the fray. Um, Vandenberg obviously back. We should see more of Hackney, you would think, between now and the end of the season, which will be a big positive. Um, and, you know, you're definitely seeing the basis of a team that, you know, right now will be competitive in the Championship next season. And clearly the hope is that if you can add three, four bits of real quality in, in the areas where we know Borough have been light and where injuries have really hurt them this season, then... You know, there is more than enough there to think that, you know, Borough can be better next season than they've been this season. And they're not far off at the minute. Well, I was going to say that because clearly the automatic has been way, way, way out the reach this season. Um, I, I do think the league at the top, you know, take the last few weeks, which has been freaky out the equation. Yeah. I, I think the top three or four are probably stronger than we're ever going to see in the in the championship. But for for Borough to be in this position now, for 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 the con for the playoffs to be in the conversation in the last few weeks, given they didn't win for seven games, they've been inconsistent. The, other than this spell and the, and the winning spell they had back in October when they beat yeah. Southampton, they've been plagued by inconsistency, and and they've had an injury um, crisis really, like like they could never have planned off a scene. To, to take all those into account and to still be in the mix, I, I think if you're Michael Carrick, you're looking and thinking like we. 
get off to a, even even a solid start, just not yeah. a disastrous one. You're not going to have hopefully a load of players to to have to settle in, and and you can hopefully avoid the injury problems you've had this year. Top six should be the the, the minimum expectation next season. Let's taking the the the, the whole Andy Ipswich games kind of together. A couple of players I want to pick out. Emmanuel Latalath, clearly. We, we, we've talked about him on the last couple of vids. Um, but, you know, at the minute, he, he he's looking about as good a striker as there is in the Championship at the moment. I mean, you know, we, 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 we've kind of always assumed, well, you know, we've assumed attacking players will come in over the summer. They will, surely. But at the moment, if you're, if you're picking your Borough team to start the first game of next season, I would argue that no matter who they bring in up front, Latalath will will be starting that game, won't he? All things being equal, as long as he's fit and free seasons okay. Yeah, I think I think the two goals, the, the, the second goal against Swansea and his goal against Hull were, were both probably up there with his, with his with his best goals of the season. Um, they were both such clean clinical finishes, weren't they? The Swansea one where he cuts inside, obviously finds a top corner, but the Hull one, um, the touch. Yeah, it took him wide, but to take him away from the defender, but then to slot it under the keeper like he did, um, I thought I thought was a class finish. And that that was the type of chance that he was missing at the start of the season, wasn't it? That that was the at the start yeah. of the season. At the start of the season, he looked like a striker who needed three or four chances to score a goal, didn't he? Whereas yeah. now that's absolutely not the case. And we were talking about this last week, weren't we? That it feels like the season's going to finish at the wrong at the wrong time for him. You just hope he can maintain that through the summer and start next year as he's finishing this season. And then at the other end of the pitch, sorry, go oh, on. Well, Luke Ayling. I was going to say Senny Dieng. Just oh, on right. the whole thing, because obviously it's felt all season to a degree like that goal was coming. Um, and the flip side is that Dieng has made some superb saves and is clearly massively important to the way Borough want to attack. And I think you actually put this to Michael Carrick after the whole game, didn't you, Dom? Like, are we in a situation where if you're going to play that type of keeper and play that kind of style of playing out from the back and taking the odd risk, you've got to accept that over the course of the season, you're probably going to concede a couple of those type of howler goals where the ball is effectively pre presented to the opposition and they score. Carrick was good after Hull because it was first put to him, like, is that is that you out of the, are you still in the championship playoff race? And he kind of came back with, you're kidding, aren't you? Type thing, you know, back up. Um, yeah. Course was still in it. And then when he was asked about the goal, um, he kind of said, I, I knew this was going to come. Um, I mean, clearly it's a talking point after after a game like that. But he was, he was, he was strong in that if you look over the course of the season, we'll create more goals playing that way than what we do, give them away. And, yeah. and and he talked about Leicester and Leeds and Southampton. Burnley did it the week earlier, didn't they, at Everton when they conceded that daft yeah. goal. Sunderland did it against Boroughs under-21s last night and Graham Murty afterwards was saying, I take responsibility. Did, if I'm asking it for last and, night, Everton against yeah. Chelsea, presented yeah. the ball to Paul Palmer, popped it back over his head. And, and it was interesting. Carrick said, um, what's the alternative? What what's the alt so you're saying is is there a time and a place? So what's the alternative going long? He yeah. said, Well, if you look back at Vardy's goal against us when, when we beat when they beat Leicester down at um down at their place, then he said that was from us going long, and then they come back and and score so clearly he feels that the, the there's more benefits to come from it than problems yeah. i get that i completely get that i still think it was a o'brien didn't look ready for it didn't yeah. want it I, I completely get where carrick's coming from but I, but I, that doesn't mean that dieng shouldn't have played that pass at that at that at moment that point, in time yeah. um yeah. but I, but but clearly and and we had this conversation. I think you were at the press conference last year when Zach Stefan, we had the same yeah, conversation. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And he was yeah. good then, wasn't he? Absolutely yeah, he true to the defence yeah. of Stefan then. Clearly, this is the way Borough play, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the game, regardless of the opposition. This this is the way Borough play. Yeah. Chelsea showed us that, didn't it? That good. Chelsea game. And I, and I think after the Chelsea game was interesting as well, because I think 
You asked him then, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. it was a talking point then, obviously. And I, and I think to a degree, there's a little bit of it as well with Michael Carrick that he feels that if 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 any of the players at any kind of time, he says to them, do you know what? Actually, you should have lumped that there. You should have got rid of that there. I think he feels that undermines his general message to the whole of the squad then. I think he feels that if he's if he's telling Senny De Yang, look, in that kind of scenario, just get it, just get rid of it. Well, then it plants how the is that any down. different when he's having the same conversation with Rav Vandenberg? If you've yeah. got three players around you and you're not really sure how to get out of it, just get rid. And he, he clearly doesn't want to go down that route with any no. of his points. No, because if if you spend all day, every week, stressing the importance of this is the way we play. This is how we'll. This is how we'll benefit. This is this is how we'll break teams down. This is how we'll beat teams. But then say, oh well, actually, if you're under the cosh against the yeah. rival, that there comes a time when you've just got to launch it. That plants the seed of doubt, doesn't it? Well, actually, is well, is this is this the most? Uh, is yeah. this the best way for us to play? Or, or 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 are we? You know, is is does there come a time when we just need to need to go along? Yeah, there won't be a change anytime soon. And it, you know, going back to last night, it, Sun, Borough's first goal, uh, Sonny Finch closed down. I think it was Henry Fields, some the, the Sunderland defender, and intercepted straight in, just three or four yards out. And Merton yeah. said afterwards, like, what I look at there is the last, the next time Fieldson got the ball, he tried to do the same thing again, and and that's what I want to see. I want to see the defenders like not knocked out the stride by mistakes. That that's clearly the way more and more teams in the championship are going to play. Or oh, just on the goalkeeper um, from Tom Glover. Did you see the Tom Glover transfer links at the end of yeah. last week? Well, they could yeah. be a few others. Um, the, but the interesting thing to come from that was, I thought. I mean, the transfer speculation. We'll have to wait and see, as is often the case at this stage of the season. You you read between the lines and 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 think. Uh, Where's that come from? Is that coming from from the camp, the Glover camp? But yeah. but but, but um, Glover Glover might need sur surgery on his on his finger, and the reports in Australia at the back end of last week were saying, sorry, yeah, we're claiming that that was why he was taking out the team. Now I'm not sure about that. It felt like we talked about it for a while, didn't it? It felt like yeah. for a couple of weeks, the Yang was building up, but then yeah. Glover wasn't involved at the weekend. Carrick said that that they've got a decision to make on the finger. So watch watch this space on that one. Mm. And, and obviously, the, you know, there has been transfer, early transfer talk around De Yang as well. So, it, you know, it, it does feel like, obviously, Salt brings to come back into the mix. Zach Hemming. Um, Zach Hemming. It, it, it feels like a summer where Borough's goalkeeper situation could be in a little bit of a state of flux again. And and on the transfer front as well, if you haven't seen or heard, uh, Ralph Vandenberg did an interview in the Dutch media over the weekend when he was asked about his future. Yeah. And his response was pretty emphatic, wasn't it? Um, I'm in the best place now. I'm 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 learning. This is a good place for me. I'm not I'm not looking to move on. Uh, we've talked about it again and again, but it, there's a wise head there on young shoulders, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, there really is, and I think. You know, he was he chose Borough because he wanted to play football. You know, he had the opportunity to go to much bigger clubs across Europe, and um, but would almost certainly have been sat on the bench. Well, you know, yes, he's had a very good season. Yes, he's a year in more into his development now. But would it would, would it be any good to him at all at the moment to go to one of those you know really bigger clubs and sit on the bench? I don't think so. And 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 it's refreshing to, to see that he doesn't think so. You touched on Ailing there. I mean, that's clearly a decision that that Borough will have to make in the summer. Um, feels at the moment like he's playing himself to a contract, isn't he? I think so. Um, I think I think Ailing and Clark have been Borough's best players over the last three four yeah. weeks. Um, they were certainly both of them were certainly Borough's best at Hull last week. I thought I thought Clark was excellent, and Ailing just relishes the niggle, doesn't he? He seems to be a pantomime yeah. villain everywhere he goes, which I guess is what comes with the territory of being at Leeds for so long. Yeah, um, yes. But he plays up to it and loves it, doesn't he? Um, and I just think so. When when you look around the the pitch, there's various areas that Borough clearly need to improve in the summer. Centre forward is going to be a priority. There's, there's going to be an area to address in the middle, isn't there? Regardless of what happens with yeah. O'Brien, maybe O'Brien. If O'Brien goes, then you're going to bring bring a player in there. Um, the forward players clearly 
Morgan Rogers went in January. I know Finazaz came in, but that wasn't to replace Rogers. Then Crooks went. There's uncertainty yeah. over Greenwood. I yeah. think that's looking more and more unlikely that Greenwood stays. Um, so you're probably going to need a couple of players there. A couple of other areas, centre half, if McNair goes, his contract's up. So by bringing Ailing in, clearly Dyke Steele doesn't feature in Carrick's plans because he hasn't played. I know Smith's coming back, but by bringing Ailing in, does it just tick the right back box early on and then you can focus on other areas? It feels like that. It feels like that. That it's, you know, and I, I don't know what Luke Aylin will be wanting. I suspect he's at the point of his career where a Johnny Howson style short term, 12 month, two year and an absolute max, but probably 12 month. He'd be more than happy to take having a good season with Borough. He's settled, doesn't have to move house, et cetera, et cetera. And then see where you're at after that. And, and you know, as we've seen from the last two months, um, you know, it, 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 it gives you a really solid foundation at, at, at right back, isn't he? You know, he's, he's not going to be a Ryan Giles style attacking wing back if you play with a five at the age that he is, etc. But um, in the way that, that that Michael Carrick, you know, wants to set his borough side up, <clears throat> as long as he's playing with a flat back four, I, I think I think Ealing's absolutely ideal. Ailing strikes me as the type of character when you're saying there about the contract that the 12 months he strikes me as a like, clearly if you get offered a three year deal elsewhere then that then that changes things yeah. but it strikes me as the type who'd see a 12 month deal and think well I'll, I'll earn another one 12 yeah. months down the line now I know with 12 months deal there's the uncertainty of injury so if Tommy Smith had have only signed a year rather than two years a year and a bit ago then what position would he have been in now so clearly clearly with a longer term deal there's more security but but Ailing strikes me as the type who, who'd always back himself to, to 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 continue to impress and I think with Ailing when you consider it when he came in he played next to no football for Leeds yeah he came in went straight into the team at Millwall and and has quickly adapted. He's clearly playing very well. So you think with a full pre-season and, and, and six months of getting to grips with what Carrick wants, he, he, it's going to be even better it's next year. Better, it just yeah. makes, I just think it makes sense. So you, you mentioned the um, under-21s there. Apart from uh, shivering at the Stadium of Light, what, uh, what, what else stood out from it? Any, um, any kind of standouts from a borough point of view Sonny Finch probably the um nearest to the first team that was on the pitch yeah it was interesting really because you never know going to the 21s you always kind of wonder whether there's going to be any first team involvement and at Sunderland that's often the case isn't it yeah. regularly yeah. this year I mean they've had the likes of Bradley Dack, Corey Evans, Hamia, yeah. Mayenda, Adji Alise, the, uh, played a couple yeah Mason Burstow the Chelsea Loney have, have all played so so you, you expect it with Sunderland. There was none with Sunderland. And, and there was none with Borough, which were, which was always, always more likely. I guess the one was Matthew Hoppy played mm. for Fulham, played against Fulham uh, last week. And you, you wonder whether he was going to be involved. He he wasn't, um, hasn't featured at all in the first team. It's hard to envisage Hoppy still being a Borough player next season, isn't it? Let's very, be honest. Yeah. Um, but, 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 the, but the Borough forward line, I thought, was full of talking points because you had... Pharrell, Pharrell Willis, who within a month of Carrick coming in, had made his debut at Blackburn, Blackpool and then signed a new deal, clearly impressed, but then got a bad injury playing for the 21s and had a long spell out. Sonny Finch, who was in the squad at the back end of last season at a time when you think back to how strong Borough were and yet he yeah. was there in the squad. He got a bad injury. And AJ Matthews, the 17-year-old who's been prolific for the under 18s, and I think he scored four or five in 11 off the top of my head for the 21s this season. As I say, he's only 17. And there was reports last week linking him with clubs in Europe. Fabrizio Romano was saying on, on Twitter that there was clubs in Europe watching him. Um, and then for someone, there was Tommy Watson, the uh, the 17 year old, um, who's been who's, who's been scoring loads of goals. Watson scored for Sunderland, but Finch scored for Borough in the first half. That's his fifth in five games for the 21s. And, yeah. and, I, and I just look at Finch and think, he, Carrick clearly rates him very highly. To be in the squad last year, when you think back to how, how strong Borough's squad was at the time. Now, it's taken nothing away from the lads who've been in and amongst the squad this season. But um, at times this season, Carrick's hand's been forced, hasn't it, by, by, yeah. by just how many injuries he's had. Um Finch has been in the squad since he's come back fit. He's, he's playing very well for he's playing very well for the um, for the twenty ones. And you look at him and think next year, next year. Clearly, you don't want to put any pressure on him, but next year you would 
you'd look and think, is 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 that going to be the year when he when he looks to to break in and, and make yeah. more of an impact in the first team? He's clearly a huge talent. He scored a second goal last night, but it was ruled out for offside. Made a couple of uh, made a couple of other chances, and it's a good win for Borough. They're up to seventh in the PL two table and the Premier League two table. It's been restructured this season, so there's twenty six teams in it. Yeah, I think. it's star format, isn't it? Yeah, the top sixteen make like an end of season playoffs, but then the top twelve go on or invited to play. In, I think it's the international cup or something next season. And Borough look well placed now. They've only got one game left, I think. Um, home at Crystal Palace. And you look at the team last night with the three players I've mentioned there, then like Law McCabe, who's been in the squad this week, yeah. this season, Luke Wollstone, who's been in the in the squad this season, others who featured in the summer. And um yeah, you look and you'd look and hope look at the team last night and hope that the future's bright. Craig Little was there watching, obviously, as you'd expect. Kieran Scott was there right. as well. And from a borough perspective, whatever age it's at, they're always going to enjoy beating Sunderland, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned Finch there. I mean, so three games left. Um, we're going to do a proper full-on Leeds preview pod at the end of the week. So we'll touch on that now, but there will be a video um, kind of specifically previewing the Leeds game at the back end of this week. The Leeds game feels like it takes care of itself because it's Leeds, it's at the Riverside. It is absolutely massive for Leeds. Then, though, Cardiff away and Watford at home, are they, at least to a slight degree, experimental games? You know, would we see, I'm not necessarily saying Finch will start either of those games, but definitely feels like an opportunity to throw him on for half an hour in one of them. But but is that Carrick's style? Is he is he going to be that type of manager? Or will he very much be, no, no, it's business, you know, these are championship matches, they're not... They're not mess about games, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm not sure. I, I just if Leeds is Leeds, you know that's going to be a massive occasion. Um, but assuming that after the Leeds game, it's mathematically impossible, which obviously um, it would be, regardless of what Borough do if, if Norwich win their game, then then it just feels like the last two games are probably an opportunity to at least see a couple of these youngsters. The only thing that I think is he, he, he experimented. I know it's completely different circumstances. He experimented to a to a degree at the back end of last season, mm. and it backfired, didn't it? And 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 interestingly, there was just a couple of references early this year from Carrick when he was talking about the the start of this season and yeah. why so much. And he was he was trying to kind of swat away suggestions that it was purely on the players that had gone and the players that had come in. And he said, didn't he, if you look at the the way we finished last season... Yeah, we did actually finish that well, yeah. I, I think I think he'll be looking at now as the start. I, I think he'll be desperate. Say if Borough get a result against Leeds, I think he'll be desperate to then continue unbeaten until the end of the season and, and, and like, look to bounce into next year. I, yeah. I think he'll keep... I'd be really surprised, I think. Like, maybe... Maybe include them and 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 like yeah. see them from the bench, but I'd be amazed if if I might be wrong, but if one of them was in from the off, I, th I think he'll continue to play like what he deems his strongest team. What what would you lean towards? Yeah, I think I think the other element with that is someone like a Hayden Hackney. To what extent do you try and get him back in for these games? I or, don't think you do. No, I was going to say, or, or to no. what extent do you say? Do you know what? <laughs> He's been out for so long now that actually, you know, what what benefit is there for playing him against Watford on that yeah. last game when he's not going to be particularly match sharp? You know, <clears> there whoever's coming back from injury, there is a slight risk that something goes wrong because it's the first time they've been in a match environment since they've been back, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I I'm with you. I, I don't think you take those risks. The only thing is. And I have heard managers refer to this. In fact, funny enough, Mike Dodds was referring to it to Sunday last week. Sometimes when you've got players like, say, Hackney, the idea in their head that they can get back to play in the last game or the last couple of games is a massive driving force for them. And actually, mentally, it does them a bit of damage if you say, actually, do you know what? Forget it. Let's start your summer now. Let's start your holiday now. You know, have a break. Get yourself back for pre-season. Actually, you know, as professional athletes, they do need that kind of light at the end of the tunnel that, no, do you know what? I can get back for this last game of the season. I guess... I guess it'll depend how close he actually is, won't it? You know, if yeah. if, he, if he's in full training this week, 
then there's absolutely no reason why he shouldn't play in one of those last three games. If he's still easing himself back in and actually he's not going to join in on the grass properly till next week, but well, then you're getting much closer to the point where you say, well, you know, what, what, what are we achieving here, I think? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I, I think, <clears throat> again, might be wrong. At this moment now, I, I think you'd look at it and think you're unlikely to see Hackney, Fry, Corburn, McNair again this season, yeah. really. Um just when you consider how long they've had out, the game's left, what's on the line and what's not on the line. And I completely get that argument, what you say there and what Dodds had said. But but I think the other one's probably stronger, especially if you're someone like Josh Coburn. After the last few months, which has been really difficult, the, the priority now has to be making sure you're ready to start pre-season, pre-season. fully fit and ready to go. Um, yeah. And I think, I, think, I think that outweighs the... The other argument. Um, but you touched on it there. I mean, that Leeds game. What's happening at the top? It's incredible, isn't oh, it? Something. I mean, we're recording this on Tuesday morning. Yeah. So if you're watching or listening on Wednesday and Southampton have lost it over Preston, then obviously ignore us. You probably would be anyway 26 minutes in. But um Southampton <laughs> went right. Like they are right back in amongst it. They'll be looking at like the late goals at Borough against Borough and Ipswich and kicking themselves, won't they? Now? Yeah. Well, so you you were obviously at Hull last week. I was at Leeds the night before for Leeds Sunderland, which obviously finished nil nil. And my goodness me, the <laughs> nerves around Ellen Road, and just the the kind of yeah, just the absolute edginess of the fans, the team, Barker afterwards. It just it um it, yeah, it's 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 incredible. It's incredible. I mean, you've seen it in the Premier League, aren't haven't you? Where you know three teams who have looked pretty much unbeatable for five sixths of the season all of a sudden you, you don't know where the next wins come from for any of them they, they don't look capable of winning i mean that is going to be some game on, on, on monday night because like i say you know leeds have to win this game and the just the pressure on them it's gonna be fascinating to see how they respond you know, you would like to think that Borough will play with a degree of freedom. You know, yes, for all the reasons we've talked about, they need, they want to keep this run going. They want to, but there's not a gun to Borough's head. You know what I mean? Borough can just go and play their game and give it a right good go and see what happens. That's not the case for Leeds, and they looked so scared in that last twenty minutes against Sunderland. Um, and 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 devoid of ideas, really. What I think is interesting, and we'll get to, as I say, we're going to do a full-on preview um, for Leeds at the back end of this week. Sunderland have, have done a job on Leeds twice now, and both times they've gone five at the back, and they've made a real point of stopping Leeds, getting the ball out wide, funneling Leeds into a congested central area, to a large degree letting them have possession, and hitting them on the break. Um, I'm I'm really interested to see how Carrick sets Borough up on Monday night. Um, I suspect, given how well they've been playing, he won't want to radically change the system, and he'll basically just you know stick with what, to be fair to him, has been working really well. Um, but Sunderland have shown certain things that I think, if you do against Leeds, work really well for you. Who, who who's your two now? I know it's not. I know Borough. I know it doesn't concern Borough. But if you're picking your, your two automatic promotion sure. winners at this stage, who you're going with? Because I'm sure it'll be different to who we picked last week. Yeah, I, I, when we did it a while ago, I I, I ended up with um, Leicester. I, I, I thought Leicester and Leeds all season. Leicester are the ones. Leicester are the ones having a massive, massive wobble, but nobody's taking advantage of it, are they? I still think when push comes to shove, it'll be Leicester and Leeds. You? Leeds have got Borough away, QPR away, Southampton home. That, yeah. That's not pleasant now, because QPR are going to, QPR needs results. Yeah. I, I, but then Leicester, like, can't, I think, going to my head now, I, I'd go Ipswich Leicester. And I, I've thought for weeks that Le- well, Leeds... They were Ipswich the final three. Let me have a look. So Ipswich are away at Hull, away at Coventry, Home to Huddersfield. <laughs> I mean, they could be absolutely anything, couldn't they? Huddersfield's run's brutal, by the way. I was looking at the fixtures at the bottom last night, trying to work out who's going down, and Huddersfield have got it rough. Uh, if Southampton win tonight, because Southampton then go to Leicester 
and go to Leeds. And, they're and the wild card, aren't they're they? They're probably good games for Southampton because the pressure's going to be all on Leicester and all on Leeds. If Southampton win tonight, then... Well, I mean, Southampton, as well as winning, still need the teams at the top to lose. So, like They've got you five said, games left, Southampton. They need to win them all. Clearly. a chance to take the points off Leicester and Leeds. Could be massive for them. Yeah. Um, I mean, that Leeds Southampton game on the last day, wow, that could be something, couldn't it? Ipswich, Hull and Coventry are way as tough, like, isn't it? I might have to change my mind as I go here. Um, oh, I don't you're, know. You're, you're I don't know. I don't know. I I'm into the world, Southampton, but I honestly don't know. I, I don't think Leeds will win a Borough on Monday night. Um, no, I don't. I think I, don't. Only I, I, mean, I think Leeds will finish in the, in the top there too, but I, I don't either. I no. think, I think, well, again, spoiler alert for the end of the week here, but I, I fancy Borough on Monday night. Yeah, I do. I think I'm going south. I'm talking my way into south. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna lose all the press now on Tuesday night, and I'm gonna be yeah, well, logging on first. You need, you, need, you, need to, um, you need to get to a bookies before that Preston game and have a yeah. little trouble on Southampton then, because before that match, I think there'll still be a pretty decent price to finish top two. Talk, talking to bookies, it, it was it wasn't a long shot, but you've had a winner at the Masters. Yes, yes, Sheffler, and you, you know what? Uh, you got a good price on him, to be fair. He was boosted to five to one, which sounds <sighs> like a horrendous price for a golf tournament, doesn't it? You know, I like back at hundred to one shots in the in the majors and sixty six to one and all this. Um, but I just I've watched quite a bit of the golf this year, especially the US stuff, and and he, and he, to me, he is head and shoulders above oh, everybody yeah. else. Like, and he and he showed it. What I'm slightly annoyed with, and I know the trouble. I, I'm slightly annoyed I didn't double it up with I am Maximus in the national reading really, because <laughs> this is like dream territory stuff, this isn't it? But um, when it, as soon as Cheltenham's finished, if I've got a little bit in, in me pot, I normally straight away have a little flutter on the national. Um, and and this isn't after timing. And, and straight away, the week after Cheltenham, I had a, I backed I am Maximus at 10 to 1. And what did it say? Um, Started about eights, didn't it? Seven, yeah. something like that. Um, it was the first horse that I fancied having won the Irish National. And then from the minute I actually started having a proper look at the Grand National to a couple of weeks before, I completely taught myself off it. So everything I then backed from then on didn't didn't go near it. So I did win a little bit something, but if I'd stuck with it, then um, yeah, there was the, the dream April double there, wasn't there? Well, on the back of that, we'll get your tips for well, it'll be three one, but we'll get your tips for 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 Monday. But we'll wait, we'll wait, yeah, for the preview. Yeah, yeah. we'll wait for the preview edition yeah. to do that. Yeah, we'll be back. We'll be back at the back end of the week, and we'll do a specific preview then to the Leeds game on Monday. By which stage Southampton will have played Preston, and I'll be able to either properly go on the line with Southampton are going to get in the top two, or 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 Preston might well be back in the playoff race. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back later in the week to preview the Leeds game. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Do subscribe, rate, review, and we'll catch you at the back end of the week.